Ni hao. I am Amanda Shonvlajit. Welcome to Interview with Ms. Panda. My um, special guest today is Alison Aishin Branchcomb. She is the author of the book All About China, Story, Songs, and Crafts for, and More for Kids. And Alison is a vid traveler, researcher, and writer. And Alison, um, when I read her book, basically, All About China is like taking a, an exciting adventure um, in China through each page. And uh, that is something very exciting. And I understand when kids read this book, they all like it, like it uh, very much as well. Also as the teachers and parents. I think they will all enjoy this book. And first I want to say Happy Chinese New Year. Xin Nian Kuai Le. Today is the second day of the Chinese Lunar New Year celebration. And this is very wonderful. We have Allison joining us today. Hello. Welcome, Allison. Ni hao. I'm so happy to be here. This is um, a wonderful opportunity to share this time with you. Thank you. And uh, Allison, in your book, All About China, Stories, Songs, Crafts, and More for Kids, you cover a wide range of topics on Chinese culture. Um, you covered like um, history, geography, festivities, recipes, songs, calligraphy. This is just a name of few. There are much more in your book all about China. Why did you decide to write a book on Chinese culture for children? Well, um, as you may know from my biography in the book, I am the mother of two children adopted from China. And my journey began by just wanting to know more about China so that I could help them learn. And um, when my kids were little, we began by reading simple folk stories and other books for kids. And, you know, folk stories have great values in them, and they loved looking at the picture books, and so I kind of made note of that. But not any good comprehensive books aimed at kids about Chinese culture. There were books about history and dynasties or inventions, um, holidays, things like that. But there wasn't a really good kid-friendly overview and so I began to feel like that was something that would be really helpful to them and as time passed and I got involved with my kids um, Chinese culture related education that we'll talk about a little later um, the idea began to dawn on me that it would be really fun to write a book and China is a country that's modernizing very fast and it's um, very, you know, complicated blend of old ways and new ways. And I think it's just really important, not just for kids who happen to be adopted from China, but for all kids to become aware of the global environment into which they're growing up. You know, I just, I have a passion about that, and I um, am not a teacher by training, but I have kind of um, learned, hopefully, a few tricks of the trade as we go along. Yeah. I, I think every parent is a teacher, you know, for, for our own children, so I think what you have been doing, I think is a very valuable, and then I, I think parents, you know, can learn from that because I think raising a young world citizen actually starts at home, and then I think this this resource book will be very helpful for the parents. So, um, in your book, you know, um, in the section of five thousand years, um, of culture and invention, you actually, you know, write from the. Um, dynasties in ancient China all the way to the modern modern time. For example, you talk about China's name, Zhongguo, uh, means Middle Kingdom, and it comes from Qing Dynasty, and that's the fact, you know, a lot of facts in, in the book. And uh, you touch on Silk Road, um, Golden Age of China, and then in the Chinese government section, you mention the relationship between Taiwan and China, 
and I think you use a very humorous way and very easy way for kids to understand the difference between China, the People's Republic of China, and Taiwan, the Republic of China. And um, you know, and you also top up feng shui your bedroom, and that's very important. Um, and then. Um, <laughs> the current current way of dressing in China and the games that kids play, um, also as well as uh, recipes and traditions and the customs and so on. You write about the old and the new. You write about the tradition and the the modern time. You touch on many topics that many uh, would skip. I find the themes of your book very are very well put together and easy for children to read and to understand. For example, my 11-year-old uh, son, basically, he enjoys your book so much, and that's why my book keeps missing from my desk or right next to my bed. Um, so I, I think, so how, how did you write in a way that is engaging <laughs> children, and then it's easy for children to understand culture? Well, the funny thing is, um, I have been writing all my adult life, but I had never written for kids. And trust me, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but based on my experience with my kids, I really wanted something that was fun, that was engaging, that had little bits of information that were fun facts. Mm -hmm. And it was organized um, along certain themes, as you mentioned. Um, Tuttle, my publisher, didn't have um, an exact map, but they had some like templates of things they wanted me to cover for, you know, what life is like for um, kids going to school, what their homes look like, what holidays. Like uh, um, appeal to children that were young and maybe sitting on their parents' lap listening to some of the folk stories, um, or as well as school age kids that were um, would find something useful for school reports and find information that's helpful in everyday life. One of the most important things about Chinese culture that you don't see in books for kids is the concept of face. And I have a little box, a do, do you know box about yes. what is face, saving face, losing face, gaining face. And I try to talk about it in ways kids could understand. Don't bully. It won't get you anywhere. It'll make it worse. Negotiate. And there's a global message for kids, if you ever heard one. Um, the other part of it was that I wanted it to be visually engaging. And uh, I happened to find the artist Lin Wong. And I just fell in love with her illustrations. She's really good at drawing kids' faces and kids' eyes, and I really believe kids connect through their eyes Yes. Um, in illustrations. And in addition to being able to draw people really well, she could draw landscapes and scenery as well as, you know, temples and Zhonghe ship. ship. You know, she could just do it all. And w at the beginning, we talked about a color palette for the book. Red, orange, golden, warm greens and teal, and just a very warm, inviting, happy look. And, uh, you know, that just contributes enormously to the look and feel um, of the book. Um, as any children's author will tell you, word budgets for each topic are tough. Yeah. When you try and boil down a dynasty and what was important um, to 100 words or 150 words, it forces you to think about not only what was important, but given the audience, how to make it interesting for a child. And 
or a young person and what things did brilliant people in China thousands of years ago figure out that we use every day. You know, yes. I mean, just one tiny example, China figured out how to make a compass. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the basis of what's in our smartphones today. <laughs> And our GPS and all sorts of applications. Um, so those are some of my inspirations. Um, the other thing is uh, Li Ming be kind of tour guides in the book. Yes. Um, I felt was helpful because kids could relate to somebody their own age that might be like a sister or brother or um, a good friend and you know a trustworthy friend so that kind of I think added to the um, composition of the book absolutely I think it's not very easy to to narrow down a dynasty in a small box but you did it <laughs> when I read it I think this is amazing because that's a lot of thoughts put in there it's a lot of energy because how you can put everything together in a box that like give the most important message, deliver that message to young readers and young audience or parents or teachers to use the book as a tool to teach the, the children about China or the Chinese culture. So I think that was really wonderful. And like I said, you put all the new, the traditional and the modern all together. So a lot of things that people know about feng shui, but they say, really? I have to feng shui in my room and how do I do that and you gave great indicator in in the book and I think that's just really fabulous and I think that's a lot of things kids actually parenting can talk about it and you can actually just do a project at home for example right now is the Chinese Lunar New Year and it's a great time to do some feng shui for your house for good luck yes <laughs> and um, and um, of course, you know, I, I totally, I believe the parents and teachers, they will find all about China, your book, a must-have world culture resource book at home or at school. And in addition, for, for parents with Chinese heritage culture and parents who have adopted children from China will find this book very resourceful. And like you mentioned, you have two daughters adopted from China. So could you talk about your Chinese heritage culture journey with your two children and uh, how do you help them to learn about Chinese culture and their heritage culture and also maybe um, their Chinese language, the heritage language, and why it is important for adopted children to learn something about their own heritage culture? Um, absolutely. Um, I, I believe it is very important that job to me is to help the kids feel comfortable in their own skin and for young kids you need to make that fun and when my older daughter was about three I discovered that um, different groups around the country were starting little Mandarin play groups and preschool kinds of activities on weekends and there was one in Colorado that was really well done that I had an opportunity to visit so I got some ideas from that and a friend of mine and I started a little Mandarin play group in Sacramento we did that with the help help of the Sacramento Chinese Culture Foundation. I reached out to them and they recommended uh, four wonderful women, uh, Chinese teachers all skilled in early childhood education. And um, together working with them we came up with some curricula of how to um, make learning fun in another language, playing bingo, you know, using Chinese characters for numbers or colors or things like that. They learned some folk songs, um, one of which is in the book. Uh, Mo Li Hua is a very important folk song in China and used on yeah. many occasions. 
head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yes. You know, it's a way to learn about body parts, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, lots of kid-friendly things. Um, and there was, at the time that this was going on, there was a lot of sharing on the internet. And so the ideas kind of spread around from people, you know, parents around the country. And we all kind of shared. Uh, my kids loved going to Chinese culture camp in the summer. It was always a highlight. They did that for quite a number of years. It was a great Chinese uh, wisdom school here in, in town. And they do a great job of all kinds of activities for all ages, you know, from like 5 to 17 years old. So um, my kids learned a lot, and I participated as a parent volunteer, so I learned a lot. Um, language was a little bit difficult for my kids because when they went to the Chinese language schools, they, on weekends, like a Saturday school, um, all the other kids had um, Chinese speaking family at home that could help them and support them and my kids didn't. And so that didn't work quite as well until they got to high school and they took Mandarin in high school. Um, I, I I recommend to families um, finding maybe it's language or folk dancing. One of my kids got into folk dancing, um, Chinese music. There there are lessons for Gu Jen and Erhu in town. Um, oh, wow. Art, you know, paint, brush painting, calligraphy. There's lots of different ways that make sense to different kids um, to learn about Chinese uh, culture. Um, with respect to um, the adoption aspect, um, our kids, of course, they look Chinese, but they needed to know their culture, and they had to explain to their friends why their parents weren't Chinese. Mm -hmm. And so we need to help kids learn how to talk about it. Um, and I really believe that having kids know things about their culture that they can talk with their friends about and and prove that they're not just bananas or whitewash because my kids <laughs> yes. got called banana white you know, one in the outside and that's not uncommon. Lots of kids that happens to lots of kids, whether mm -hmm. they're adopted or not. And but being able to show that they knew some things about China gave them, I think, a sense of self esteem and a little bit of feeling of cultural competence. Um, you know, it was never going to be as though my kids were brought up in China or that my husband and I were Chinese. It just wasn't going to work that way. That wasn't realistic. But um, we did the best we could with the resources, and, um, you know, that's kind of what we did. Our The other thing I feel pretty strongly about is making sure the kids go to a school that has a variety of kids of different races. Yes. And um, so that they're not the only one. I think that's hard. I think kids need to have friends that they can talk to, even if they don't talk a lot about being Chinese. And actually, I wanted to make friends, uh, chi friends with Chinese people because I wanted to understand how to talk about race and how to talk about different things that I had no experience with. Right. So, um, you know, those are those are some of my tips and my you know my thoughts about that. It, it's that, complicated. You know, yes. ra racial identity is complicated for anybody. Absolutely. Uh, any person of color, but especially for adopted kids and. You know, their feelings change over time from being kids to teenagers and young adults and, of course, going into college and being working professionals, um, having kids of their own. You know, at every stage of life, it's a little different, and they process it, and they need, they need to have confidence in themselves to be able to walk through those, uh, you know, walk through that path. Yeah. Um 
I think I think it's a really important. I think you 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 are a mother. Um, you're you're a wonderful teacher, even though you're not a, trained as a teacher. But we can just tell from you just said because I think you did so many things for your two daughters, and then I think there's so many things people can learn from this. Not just um. um not just the culture, the language, but how to um, give your children um, confidence, you know, in their own identity, and let them know that you know, obviously you have a bicultural uh, family, you have the American culture, and you you keep them their Chinese heritage culture. So I think that's something very important for children. Um, especially like you mentioned, you know, for adopted children, they need to understand where they're from. You're very open to that. And I think the most um, fun thing you talk about is actually you created a community for for your for your children. Um, you talk about you outreached to this wonderful organization, um, Sacramento Chinese Culture Foundation. I, am I correct? Yes. Yes. Um, I think the resource, you, you find a resource and you, you kind of be in touch with them and you created your own community and you even brought in the Chinese language playgroup and to, to create one for your children and then probably because of that you actually um, met more people, more families who actually have the same similar background and situation. I think that's the most important thing for parents to to understand a lot of times we think about maybe we don't have enough resource but at the same time maybe the resource is right uh, right next to us or around us what do we need to do we probably need to step out our comfort zone and try to reach out and you talk about you also want to make friends with Chinese people so you can understand more about the Chinese culture you talk about the songs you included in your book Mo Li Hua the jasmine flower that's definitely a song all the Chinese children know and then I, I think it's a something you know you write so many things from your research you, all the things you put together that's a lot of work from this book so I, I think that's really fascinating and then the advice you have for parents I think that's true I think every time we learn a, a, a culture I think it's a it's a journey it never stops you, you keep learning and you always find more so um, even right. for Chinese people, you I learn something new every time when I read a new book because for American culture, for European culture, for Asian culture, there are so many things to learn. I think the most important thing, just like you said, we need to be open-minded and to to learn what comes to us and to reach out, extend our knowledge, you know, whenever we can. Yeah. Um, I think that's wonderful, and I also know that you you travel extensively in China, and you have a beautiful collection of Chinese art. And uh, I would like to know if we have the pleasure to to have you show us a few of items um, like you use you use to um, to teach Chinese culture to kids. <laughs> okay, well. Um... On page 42 of my book, there is um, kind of a number of pictures of some things, and yes. I just wanted to give kids... ...a little um, up close and personal. Ford can see this. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, this is so light. It's only like one or two ounces, and it's so thin you can see through it. And yeah. these little tiny white dots are like rice size uh, places in the pottery that are so thin that the light gets through. Mm -hmm. um, this the pottery comes from Jiangxi province, which is where my kids were from. Mm -hmm. um, another item I'll just share with you is cloisonne. The Chinese uh, artisans developed this art uh, centuries ago, and I don't know if you can see, but in this a picture there's little tiny copper frame that the yes. power uh -huh. is built around 
and they they move the frame first, and then they fill in the spots with different colored enamel powder, and then it gets heated, melted, um, and that's a way uh, one kind of uh, piece of uh, cloisonne art. So I thought I would show that. That's beautiful. Um, this fascinates me. This can you tell me if you can see? Yes, it's very it's very clear. It's a ball, but inside the ball, ball there there is art, like a painting inside. There is a hole in the bottom, mm -hmm. and a Chinese artist has a very thin paintbrush that is on an angle. Yes, and they paint this from the inside. These are butterflies, as you can see, and there is just some amazingly intricate work along this line that you can find yes. over China. There's also a little paper cut. Um, here's a different one. This is the symbol Fu for good luck, which is yes, very Chinese New Year. <laughs> I uh, see around New Year, and this is a, this. Look at how, um, oops, intricate and detailed this is. And at Chinese New Year, you will see many signs with this upside down. And to a Chinese person, it means that luck has arrived. Yeah, it's a it's a play on word. Dao means arrived, so dao yeah. la. So it's like the good luck has arrived in your your house, in your family. That is beautiful. That's one Chinese character with the beautiful intricate um paper cutting in inside. Yes. Um, one um last thing, I'll just make a little comment about on that uh, particular page. There is a, a painting that Lin Wang did of a jade sculpture that's a sh sailing ship with uh, great big masts on it, and it's all jade. Um, my family and I had the pleasure of visiting it and seeing that. Wow. Um, but jade is carved. Jade comes in all different kinds of colors people don't know that it's not just green it yes. comes in white and tan and purple and I actually wear a piece of purple jade that is um, a little carving of Guan Yin who is the goddess of compassion and mercy That's and right. seen as a protector of children yes and uh, it's one of my one of my favorite necklaces. So Beautiful. those are just a few little things from China. Wow! I mean, I also see things behind you. Actually, <laughs> I think they're symbolic as well. But like bamboo is very symbolic yeah. for 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 Chinese. Would you like to touch on that as well? Oh, sure. Um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, the bamboo is really. Um, there's a cluster of bamboo stalks, and they are um, grown in a uh, around like a pipe-like thing, and it's called lucky bamboo. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese give each other living plants at the beginning of Chinese New Year as a, a way to talk about, you know, let's look forward to the future and let's see what we can grow and make prosper. Um, also, in the back there by my book are two little porcelain sculptures of kids doing gung fu. Yes. And, <laughs> and, yes. And um, so there, there's many different ways uh, of uh, many different kinds of pottery and porcelain in China. Yes. Uh, unlimited, un mind boggling from teapots to vases, you know, from tiny little things to huge, massive pieces. And um, there is, it's just truly amazing. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you for showing us your beautiful collection, um, precious collection from China. And then I think that's also one thing very important in your book 
even for kids they're younger they, they even cannot read very much they can see the pictures the paintings and they'll be it's they are so catchy and so and, and the kids will be drawn to learn more about this culture so I think that's a really really fun way to learn about uh, one culture through pictures and stories and different facts I think uh, thank you for showing us that you all the beautiful um, artworks from China and I think learning one a world culture will lead children to be curious about or to be aware of or to learn more about the diversity in our own community, in our society, or in the world. And your book, all about China, stories, songs, crafts, and more for kids, actually opens a window for the children to learn more about the world. And um, I understand you actually have prepared a a special present, a gift for um, the students at Cotopaxi Academia um, in Quito, Ecuador. Yes, um, I am sending down to the children in your school at the um, American International School in Quito, Ecuador, um, a personally signed, autographed copy of my book that wow. says to my friends in Cotopaxi Academia, Enjoy learning about the spirit of China. How wonderful. Allison Branscombe. Wow. Thank so, you so much. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, can you, I don't know how I... Yes, I can see it. Yes. Okay. So, wow. Thank you so much. So, the students at the Cotopaxi Academia will be able to read an author autographed copy of all about China very soon in Ecuador. Thank you so much for sending your passion for culture all the way from California to Ecuador, Latin America. Thank you so much. So last welcome. but not least, I would like to see if you can share your top advice for parents and teachers who are raising young world citizens at school or at home. Sure. Um, you know, first off, I didn't set out to become an expert on China. That was never my goal. My goal was to build a bridge between Western culture and China, between myself and my kids, between teachers and their students, parents and their kids all around the world. Um, I would like parents to use my book and others to instill a sense of wonder about the world world and you know for it we may speak different languages but we have much more in common than we have differences and our world has some very complicated problems to solve for the future and we want our kids to be able to have those cultural sensitivities and cultural awarenesses so that as they move forward from kids to teenagers to college students and on into their professional life they are equipped to have those kind of nuanced conversations with people of other countries and other cultures and that's how we can get along. Um, I fully um, support everybody, uh, all parents reading to their kids. Read, 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 and talk. And for younger kids, play, do crafts, do activities. Um, by the way, Three other great books in this series, all about Korea, all about Japan, all about Malaysia. And those kinds of books are essential for guides, for teachers to use in the classroom, for parents to use. Um, engage your kids. Talk about what's on the news. You know, not all of what's on the news is very fun to think about, but find kid-appropriate ways to talk about some of those topics at the dinner table and engage your kids. Have them think about, well, how would they solve that problem? 
how would they think about it? What would how would they make friends with other people in in other other kids in other countries? I think there's just so much that parents can do, and kids watch what we do as parents. Kids watch what their teachers do, and to the extent that we model. Talking about and understand other people's cultures is is a blessing for our kids in their journey to becoming global citizens. Absolutely, I think um, every book about a culture and everything we talk about, you know, regarding culture, I think it's like planting a seed for our children for global awareness, for understand. Um, new cultures, or different cultures, and to respect. And then when we talk about it, we do comparison because I think a lot of times when you talk about different cultures, then kids from their own eyes they see the differences and similarities in different cultures, and the world becomes smaller. And then there are more things they can do, and they understand more. And I think that's our goal for helping kids to become a, um, a world citizen. And I think, thank you so much, Allison, for joining us today and sharing your insights of uh, global education and also your book, All About China, Stories, Songs, Crafts, and More for, to, for Kids. We really enjoyed it, and I believe all the parents and teachers will find this as a very good book for a resource for learning about China and from there move on to explore more about the world. Thank you so much Allison for joining us. Thank you very much Amanda. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for our audience. Thank you for watching this episode or interview with Miss Panda. Have a wonderful day and then I will see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye. I'll see you next time. 再见，我们下次见。